This is the fourth video in the market structures series in the IB microeconomics high level only component. This will be part two of monopoly as a market structure or a market form. When talking about monopoly as a market structure, it's very important to understand the concept of a natural monopoly. Some industries are natural monopolies. What is the concept of a natural monopoly? Well, an industry is a natural monopoly if there are only enough economies of scale available in the market to support one firm. Um, the only way economies of scale can be achieved in this market is for one firm to grow really, really big. If any other firm entered this market, that would split the market demand between the two firms because there would be more competition. And then neither of them would even be able to make even a normal profit. They wouldn't even be able to break even. Examples of natural monopolies are industries that supply utilities such as water, such as electricity, such as gas. Think about it. Um, supplying water or electricity or gas requires massive investments in infrastructure. I don't know, building those telephone cable lines or building piping and so on. Um, these are industries where economies of scale would be very hard for multiple firms to realize because of the massive investment. So when we talk about monopolies, remember that some monopolies are natural monopolies and um, there's only enough economies of scale for one firm in this market. So what does this look like diagrammatically? Well as you can see here there's the long run average cost curve the LRAC here and the average revenue curve is the green um, curve here. This is the demand curve. As you can see the monopolist will only earn a profit in the long run if the output produced is between the range of Q1 and Q2. If another firm enters the market, it will take away some of the demand that this firm is facing. So the demand curve will shift to the left for this firm, the demand that this one firm faces, because now the demand is split between both firms. And as you can see now, um, the firm, the long run average costs a curve is higher than all the points on the second demand curve. Uh, so in this case, we say that this firm is a natural monopolist. It is actually inefficient for anyone else to enter the market because there are only enough economies of scale for one producer. Another important question is the question of efficiency. Are monopolists um, efficient? Well, we know that a monopolist tries to maximize their profit by restricting output, which pushes up the price. And they produce output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, in the case of profit-maximizing monopolists. Now, at this level of output, there will be neither allocative efficiency or productive efficiency. Because allocative efficiency occurs at the level of output where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, and this is not the level of output that the monopolist will produce, and productive efficiency occurs at the level of output where average cost is equal to marginal cost. And once again, this is not the level of output that the monopolist will produce. So, monopolists do not achieve either allocative efficiency or productive efficiency. They are allocatively and productively inefficient. And this diagram here can show you um, why or how they are allocatively and productively inefficient. Allocative efficiency occurs at the level of output where marginal cost equals average revenue. Um, so you see where marginal cost intersects average revenue. It's this point here. And this is the quantity that would be produced if there is allocative efficiency. Productive efficiency, on the other hand, occurs at the level of output where average cost is equal to marginal cost. And as you can see here, the average cost and marginal cost curve intersect here. And this would be QPE would be the level of output that a productively efficient monopolist will produce. But a profit maximizing monopolist would restrict output and produce at a level of output where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So this is the level of output that the monopolist will actually produce, QPM. And you would go up to the demand curve to get the price that they would charge. We'll call it PPM, profit maximizing price. This green box here will be the abnormal profit. So you can see that a monopolist will not achieve either allocative or productive efficiency. They will restrict output 
to push up the price and therefore earn an abnormal profit. So is that necessarily a bad thing, the fact that a monopolist will restrict output to push up price and earn abnormal profit? A very important question is, are all monopolies bad? Well, actually, sometimes there are reasons why a monopoly may be considered desirable. Monopolists uh, often spend lots and lots of money to finance research and development. So they reinvest a lot of their economic profits to finance research and development. And this is a good thing for consumers in the long run. Also, um, monopolists are often motivated to innovate in order to maintain their abnormal profits. So they're often driven by the need to innovate. And of course, monopolists benefit from economies of scale. So you cannot really say that all monopolists are bad just because they are allocatively and productively inefficient. These are three reasons why monopolies may sometimes be considered desirable. These economic profits or abnormal profits uh, allow them to finance and fund research and development, allow them to innovate in order to be able to maintain this abnormal profit, and allow them to achieve significant economies of scale. So let's compare between monopoly as a market structure with perfect competition as a market structure. The first advantage that the monopoly has in comparison with perfect competition is a monopolist may be able to achieve substantial economies of scale. This pushes their marginal cost curve down, which allows them to produce at a higher output and low, lower price than in perfect competition. Here's an example. Um, if the industry was perfectly competitive, this would be the industry supply. Okay, But because there is, in the case of a monopolist, the monopolist, by achieving substantial economies of scale, this would be their marginal cost curve right here, the marginal cost curve of the monopolist. As you can see, the output provided by the monopolist, which is QM, and the price charged PM, um, occurs where marginal revenue and the marginal cost curve intersect. Whereas, if the firm was perfectly competitive, this would be the quantity provided, QPC, and this would be the price charged. As you can see in this case, because um, the monopolist can achieve significant economies of scale, they can actually end up charging a lower price and producing more output. In this case, again, this could be in the case of a natural monopoly, for example. A second advantage that a uh, monopoly has over perfect competition is higher levels of investment in research and development due to earning those abnormal profits and the desire to maintain them. This level of investment in research and development will benefit consumers in the long run. So these are two advantages that uh, monopoly as a market structure may have over perfect competition as a market structure. However, there are also disadvantages when it comes to talking about monopoly and comparing them to perfect competition. The first disadvantage is if significant economies of scale do not exist, if those economies of scale do not exist, then the monopolist may actually restrict output and charge a higher price than under perfect competition. And the high profits of the monopolist can often be seen as unfair, especially by competitive firms. And this will often depend on the size and the power of the monopoly. So these are disadvantages of monopoly when compared to perfect competition. As you can see in this diagram here, this is a situation where uh, the monopolist doesn't realize significant economies of scale. Uh, if the uh, industry was provided by a perfectly competitive market. So if we looked at supply under perfect competition, this would be the uh, marginal cost or the supply under perfect competition. The market supply, this would be the quantity uh, of output supplied or provided by a perfectly competitive industry because, it, because a perfectly competitive industry would produce at a level where um, average revenue is equal to marginal cost because perfect competition is uh, allocatively efficient. However, the monopolist that wants to maximize their profits will produce at a level where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. So they would restrict output and produce 
uh, QM as the level of output and charge a higher price, PM, than in perfect competition. So again, it depends on the economies of scale. If the monopolist, by being one firm, can't really achieve significant economies of scale, it may actually be inefficient and may be better to encourage more competition in this market. To summarize, there are three possible problems with monopolies when we compare them to perfect competition. The first problem is that monopolies are productively and allocatively inefficient. The second major problem is they can charge a higher price for a lower level of output. They restrict output in order to push up the price, which allows them to earn those abnormal profits. The third um, a possible problem is that they often exercise anti-competitive behavior to maintain their monopoly power. And these are the reasons why governments often have laws and policies to regulate monopolies and limit their power. However, remember, government policies to regulate monopoly, monopoly power are not always good in themselves. They have their advantages and disadvantages as well, and we'll talk about those in a later video.